what's good y'all it's your boy ross back at again with another video so i wanted to kind of talk to you guys about something have you ever been in a situation watching the wwe product and you're watching a story unfold and you're watching series of matches between two individual in individuals and it finally gets to a major pay-per-view the, the 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 lights are on bright and you're watching this play out and you kind of have an idea of how the story is going to go you think you have the uh the right idea and the match happens match is good you're enjoying it and you're just waiting for the finish in your head that you think is going to happen and it doesn't happen in fact the complete opposite happens and you're just sitting there shocked and stunned that wwe actually pulled a swerve on you and a lot of times it's mixed emotions you, you can be upset you can be confused you can be uh disappointed have you ever had any of those instances happen to you guys for me it's happened a few times but i want to talk about the most notable moments where i sat up there and I thought I knew what was going to happen. And I thought I knew the ending of a particular match or a particular feud only to be swerved in the end and left confused and just just wondering what the hell is going on. So I want to talk about some of these moments. Uh, first and foremost, shout out to everyone that's uh, been supporting the videos as of late. Thank you so much for all the love and support. You guys are amazing. Road to 150K. So let's get right into this one. So one of the matches I can just instantly talk to you guys about. And I'm sure some of you guys probably have the same sentiments. Daniel Bryan, SummerSlam 2013. This was peak yes movement. When John Cena and Daniel Bryan was going to face each other for the WWE Championship. The promos leading up to the match was fantastic. I was looking forward to it. The Yes Movement was really rolling. And John Cena and Daniel Bryan had a really good match. Very entertaining main event. You had Triple H as the guest uh, referee. So I'm like, all right, cool. Match was fantastic, full of twists and turns, but the crowd was 100% behind Daniel Bryan. And when Daniel Bryan finally got the pin for the one, two, three victory, everyone went crazy. It was a huge pop. I popped because I was like, oh my God, they actually did it. They actually pulled the trigger. And I was very concerned if they were going to actually do it, but they actually did it. At that moment, I was like, oh, man, this is amazing. This is great. I'm like, okay, WWE is listening to their fans. Just a great moment. They they popped the confetti. The confetti was going everywhere. I was like, oh, this is nice. The Yes Movement is at its peak right now. Daniel Bryan achieved his goal. This is great. Daniel Bryan's celebrating, having a great time or whatnot. Then you hear Randy Orton's music. And you're like, wait a minute, Randy Orton, He at the time he was money in the bank winner. I was like, well, my boy Daniel Bryan, he's good. You know what I'm saying? He still he still have some, some energy left in the tank. He could go with Randy Orton. We could have an impromptu match. As long as the right person wins, right? And then all of a sudden, Triple H grabs Daniel Bryan, kicks him in the gut, gives him a pedigree, and you're like, oh, no. No, not this way. Oh. Randy Orton slithers into the ring, cashes in his money in the bank, and pins Daniel Bryan for the one, two, three. When I say I was just <clears throat> immediately defeated, like my soul was hurt, my heart was hurt, People in the crowd was booming like crazy, and it worked. This was a really good way to give people what they want and then just take it from them. I was like, oh, my God, this was so good. I'm not going to lie to you. It definitely, it it had me wanting to see what was going to happen on Monday night because, like, nah, Daniel Bryan can't go out this way. 
and it, it led to some some quite inter uh interesting and uh entertaining television leading up to that year's Wrest uh WrestleMania. But man, that was just one of those moments where I was just like, we finally got what we wanted, only for WWE to say, uh uh uh. So another moment <clears throat> where I think a lot of us figured, you know, it was it was gonna be one way and it ended up being another. The one of the most infamous moments at WrestleMania 30, The Undertaker versus Brock Lesnar. Now, going into this match, I was somewhat intrigued because, you know, Undertaker, Brock Lesnar, they have history. So it was going to be very interesting to see what they were going to do there. I was I was intrigued, but I just knew in my head. Come on now, man. We know we know the Undertaker going to get the job done against Brock Lesnar. So we get to the match, and to be honest with you, the match didn't live up to the hype. We end up finding out later the reason why the match quality wasn't as good as a lot of us expected, because The Undertaker ended up suffering a concussion mid-match. So at this point, during the match, he's kind of out of it. He's not even really 100% there, so... You know, they really trying to, you know, pull an audible and try to get something out of it. But once again, The Undertaker was, at that point, he really was on autopilot, which is, when you really think about it, it's quite amazing for someone to literally be c concussed, but still out there wrestling as best as they possibly can. It's quite amazing. But <clears throat> we're watching the match. Everything's playing out. He gets hit with one F5. You know, he's kicking out. He gets hit with two F5s. We know he's kicking out. He get hit with three F5s. You think he's kicking out. And this is The Undertaker. At WrestleMania, he's, he kicks out of everything. The dude kicked out of a super kick into a pedigree combo. Kicked out of that. Super kick into the pedigree combo. He's kicking out of three F5s, right? Right? Wrong. No. Once that third F5 hit, it was one, two, three. And... Everyone, including myself, including everyone that was at the arena, was completely and utterly shocked. I mean, shocked. I mean, floored. Just couldn't believe what we just saw. Everyone in their mom thought, oh, Undertaker's going to get the job done. No, he didn't. And no one could believe it. And to this day, it's one of the most weirdest feelings I've ever had watching a wrestling show because no one knew what to say. No one knew what to say. It was just, it it sucked the energy out of everyone in that crowd. Like, the energy was gone, deflated, defeated, confused. And it's one of those moments where I... I I don't see it being replicated for quite some time. It has to be something very shocking for that to happen. This was shocking. No one saw it coming. And it will be a moment I always remember because I'm like, yo, he lost. He didn't lose in like a, it was a five-star classic. He lost in the, in the middle of a road type match. The finish wasn't even built up. It just happened and he lost. Just. What do you do? What do you say in that moment? Insanity. And I got one more match for you guys. The recent one. And this one still, still stings a little bit. So, we know. Roman Reigns has been on this legendary run, right? Legendary. Probably will never be replicated again. Um, and we also know Cody Rose came back last year. Back to WWE, you know what I'm saying? Actually, no, it was, uh, yeah, no, it was last year. Came back last year or whatnot, then he got injured, and he was able to return earlier this year. Back to WWE, you know, back where it started for him. And he's going to finish the story. And I was looking forward to this match, and they were able to get us fans on board with Cody maybe being the one to get the job done. I know a lot of people wanted Sammy to do it, but they were able to turn that momentum to Cody. <clears throat> and this was the first time in a very long time where it felt like they could actually pull the trigger here. Now, of course, 
This was before he reached a thousand days. But I think a lot of us were starting to realize, well, I mean, he doesn't have to break that record. If anything, it's been a memorable title without him reaching a thousand days. There's some of you guys that are like, nah, there's no way they're going to have him break it. And you guys were correct. We get to the match. Match was everything we needed. Hell, night one was set off perfectly. Sami Zayn, Kevin Owens, they defeated the Usos to became the undisputed tag champs. So that's like, okay, part one of this story is complete. Cody, all you gotta do is finish it. This match was great. It was fantastic. It was a main event worthy match. It felt like a big fight, a uh, big fight feel. It was great. You even had Solo get ejected at the beginning of the match. I'm like, all right, I'm liking this. Cody doing this thing, Roman doing this thing. It's fantastic. I'm into it. Then, of course, obviously, the shenanigans. Of course, the Usos are going to come out there and help. Obviously, you knew it was coming. But the reinforcements in Sammy and Kevin Owens coming out there, taking care of the Usos. And then for the first time in a long time, Roman is in the ring by himself. You have Sami Zayn. And you have Kevin Owens, the people that Roman has been torturing for months and causing problems and issues for. They finally get they get back. Kevin Owens hits him with the stunner. Sami Zayn hits him with the Huluva kick. They're getting their get back. And I'm like, oh my goodness, this is about to happen. Cody start to capitalize. He hit him with one crossroads. He said one's not enough. He hit him with two crossroads. He said two's not enough. He's going for the trifecta, and we know Roman's not kicking out. I'm losing my shit. I'm like, oh, this is about to happen. This is it. And fucking Solo comes back out there. Samoan spikes Cody, and I knew it was over then and there. Roman hits the spear. One. And just, just the feelings I had. You guys saw it on the live stream. If you was there to see it, I was just defeated. I was just defeated, bro. I was like, the snicker and Roman will never lose. This is it. This nigga Roman will never fucking lose. I had no hope. I had no aspirations. It was all darkness from there, bro. It was it was an emotion that once again WWE is very good at giving you. They make you think. They make you believe Cody is gonna do it, only for him to not be able to do it. And boy, did it hurt. And now it's like, oh well, what? <clears throat> we gotta wait till SummerSlam. That didn't happen. Now we gotta wait till next year's WrestleMania for it to maybe happen. It may not even happen. We may end up getting Roman versus The Rock. Either way, that was a moment that I'll always remember, you know, going through the years. I will always remember the moment where I thought Cody was going to finish the job for his father. Only to get <laughs> outnumbered by the bloodline. God dang it, man. But those are the three matches. Instantly, I can remember watching live and just feeling deflated when it was all said and done and it's a good emotion because it makes you want to see the product that next night what's going to happen you it makes you want to see how is the baby face or what's going to happen next in this feud like you want to see the ending and the conclusion to this potential feud something has to give so i will say this wwe still definitely kept me interested i know a lot of people with cody versus roman thing they were kind of over it they feel like if cody wasn't gonna do it no one's gonna do it so they were kind of over it but i do feel like they were able to somewhat help cody in a sense but with the rock coming back i don't know if his story will get completed so maybe that was a one and done who knows so comment down below let me know some other matches where you you just knew this person was winning you just knew the outcome you just had it already set up in your mind and it didn't happen and wwe pulled a swerve on you and you were not expecting it and it just 
it hurt. <laughs> Let me know what match that was for you. If it wasn't uh, these one of these three matches, but I appreciate all the love and support, guys. Sean on channel, Road to 150K, and I'm still the speedy YouTube wrestling champion of the world. Appreciate y'all kicking with me. See you on the next one. Peace.